we got a lot to get into, dude. Not too much. Too much. Too like much. That. What a season. I mean, listen, Ugh. I got I got to start with the end here because so, so much happened last night. I mean, I want to start with the last words that were said about you. Bananas uh, evokes TJ's infamous words, you know, hope to see you never in a manner yeah. of speaking. I'm super curious, you know, it's been about like six months or so since you filmed that season. What has the relationship been like? Has Have those bridges been rebuilt since Croatia? Yeah, I think I think we're in a better place now. I've seen him after the show. I listen, I know Johnny and um I know that he's he I know that he was very hurt and I you know not you know he felt crossed. I feel like we build a really good friendship and um we build really good trust and you know that, that's just something that I have to live with and that's just something that I you know it's my biggest one of my biggest regrets um from honestly my whole challenge career from the six seasons that I've done was crossing Johnny. Um, cause you know, I did, I, I think people throughout the years haven't seen our friendship cause it's, I mean, it's boring. It doesn't make for good TV when people are bonding and getting along. Right. <laughs> so it's better when we're ripping each other's heads off and arguing, but me and Johnny have a really good friendship and he's been really good for me. So for me to cross him at the end, um, you know, it was really tough. I think that I had to choose between two of my really good friends. One of one of them being literally my brother, my best friend, and then Johnny that be, is a really good friend of mine. So I was in a really tough spot, but still the way I wish I would have just owned it and would have been like, listen, Johnny, this is what I have to do. I'm sorry. Instead of lying and obviously swearing on my family. But to be honest with you, I did not know what I was going to do until I got in front of like until I got in front of the, not the hopper, selecting the balls. Like I I was so torn. So it's just something that I regret. It's something that I have to learn from. I will never, ever once swear on my family. That's like my biggest regret. I'm so disappointed in myself. But also I think that next time I'm just going to, you know, have to have the conversations with people before I do moves like that. I think, you know, one thing is like playing the game, like playing a cutthroat game and making these moves. And you see it in Survivor every season where people swear on the Bible. I mean, Dan Giesing swore it on the Bible and then uh -huh. oh, he's a great player and he's this maverick player. The challenge fans, it's a little different. It's like, you know, I could blindside Wes and it's not like, oh my God, this guy's a great player. It's like, no, you're a piece of shit. Like, <laughs> So it's just, the energy is so different. And, you know, I, I I really came into this season saying I was going to put myself first and do what I had to do for me. But in doing that, I do play with my heart and I do care about my friendships. And it was just hard to make those moves. So, yeah, I do regret it. And we're in a good place now, but I know that once we step back in that game, you know, I know it's going to come my way and I'm going to just have to take it and accept it and stand by my moves, right? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. when to your point, it did seem like you were so torn up until you were standing in front yeah. of those balls. Talk to me about the reasoning that eventually did make you choose Bananas Ball. You know, how much was it you appeasing Fessy? How much was it, okay, this is a seven time champ. We need to send him into elimination. Well, what was the exact reasoning that had you vote for Johnny? All of that. It was all of, it was all of the above. Um, what people don't see is that we, so it felt like two days of, you know, um, it felt like two days of just like literally being a ball of anxiety. We knew the final was right there. We knew it was, we were getting, I mean, we knew we were hours away from the final that day. We happened to wake up early for the challenge because we had to be up really early. So we were probably up at four in the morning. I was so sleep deprived, so tired. And then it was just like, you guys saw, 10 minutes of what was hours of back and forth between Johnny and Fessy and Corey and Johnny and Fessy and Corey. And I was like a mm. pinball for like four or five hours throughout the day. Um, and I was really fucking torn. Um, you know, I think that the smart move would have been sending in Corey and I would have made my first final, but I had told Corey prior to coming into the game that I was going to look out for him. I had crossed him in live spies, not crossed him, but I, Live Spies and Allies, he felt like I really wronged him because I chose technically Logan over him. Hmm. So I came into this season wanting to look out for him, which they don't show that conversation, but we had it in the game early on. So at that point, it's like, I'm playing against all the vets. We made it this far. We made it to this point. I wish we could have had that conversation. Like, hey, we all played together. We made it this far. It's a huge accomplishment. Chris won. So happy for him. Now it's like, I wish I could have gone about it like that and would have been like, hey, Corey, I'm sorry. 
you know, this is just where we're at. But it just really felt that I was choosing between Fessy and jo like Johnny. I felt like Corey was like out of the picture, which is so crazy. But like, it felt like no matter what, I was going to cross a friend. And it was really hard, you know. I think people always say, put yourself first and do what's best for you. And yeah, um, that's a lot of people do do that. But I, I can't detach from my friendships, especially at that point. I don't know. I just, I fire hard. I love hard. I, I love these people like, you know, you know, like family. And it, it was just really hard. So that was a really yeah. tough decision to make. But yeah. So, I mean, you talk about these friendships. You come out of that hopper vote and here comes Tori saying, listen, I'm sorry. I know you talked about being side to side with Bananas and Tori this entire time. And here's Tori coming to you being like, I'm sorry I had to vote for you. And arguably that was one of the votes that got you down in elimination and ended up sending you out right before the final. So give me your reaction to that. And I also like to know a bit more about, because the vets were so kind of enigmatic to us, like who were your tightest people throughout the game? Um, Yeah, so my closest, I was in... I mean, as you guys saw, I was in a really good spot throughout the whole season. Yeah. Um, but my closest allies were definitely Tori, Johnny, and Fessy. Those were my three. Those were like mm. my if you want to say my untouchables, right? Up to that point. Um, so I was even in conversations early on when their names would come up, I was always deflecting. I was always throwing the target on somebody else. I was always involved in game, like, and there's only so much that the producers can show, and they did a great job at highlighting like most of the game but I was non-stop I felt like I was playing the game and I was doing what I could from my end to make sure that I could protect them even though you know they won their things and did what they had to do like I felt like I was mm -hmm. always playing and always looking up for those three till the very end um so yeah they were definitely my closest allies um but yeah with the Tory move man I I, I can sit here and give her shit and be pissed at her. And I'll be honest with you. I am like even having to relive that and watching that with my family last night and, you know, seeing her do that, that sucks. I think if anybody knows how bad I've wanted to one run my first final, but win this game, it's her like we live in Miami. We hang out all the time and we're really close. Um, I love Tori to death. I know that hopefully in future seasons, she won't do that to me but it's like you know i'd be a hypocrite i just crossed johnny so like for me to be pissed at tori she made the same move so it's like just overall the whole thing was really shitty that's all i can say it was really mm -hmm. shitty and it sucked and it was just really fucking hard but you can only learn from it right like i can't i can't beat myself up about it it's done it's been months i can move on and hopefully in future seasons we'll be able to do right by I'll be able to do right by Johnny. Tori, hopefully she'll look out for me and it won't happen again. And you can only learn from it. So yeah, I know that's not the cool, fun answer that everybody wants, but. Well, yeah. I, I do want to talk about your political game because I, I do think this is across Big Brother in the challenge, maybe like the best maneuvering you've been able to do strategically. You barely caught any hopper votes. I think you caught like half of them of the four you've gotten in this last episode. Was this something you had sort of like prepared for this season as opposed to previous seasons was this purely because like you happened to be in a house with mtv vets and big brother people both of whom you were close with like what was the secret to the success you got in this season i think it's that i think that it was the dynamic of the group that was in there i think that you know being split between cbs i was able to play that angle with the big brother group and um having the vets that I was good with all of them going into the game at least um so I was in a I knew I was in a really good spot I I literally told myself you know we got to the airport and we see everyone and I already know the vets are coming um and I see everybody and I'm like Josh just keep your fucking cool and you'll be <laughs> like I can never lay low I'm just not that player I'm not that person I don't have that <laughs> personality where I can like lay low and flow and go under the radar i'm like i am the radar i'm like above the radar so it's like um i could never play that game but i was like all right from the very start i was like i'm gonna be a very strong political social player you know and i think that that was my strength and will it work out in future seasons if they do cbs seasons i don't know probably not because i don't know that it it, it all ha it all worked out because of the group that was there i made I came in with strong connections and and the reality is as I went on, like I told myself I'm all for the vets and I'm working with the vets and all that stuff. But as the game went on, I started connecting with people. Me and Chris got really close and they didn't show that friendship, mm. you know, um, towards the middle of the game. It went from wanting to target 
um, you know, Desi and Michaela to then I'm like, holy shit, I'm so like, how can you not be proud of Michaela and everything that she's doing and root for her and want to see her success? So it shifted as the game went on and the relationships changed. And that's just how I, who I am as a person. Like, I just connect with people. So I think that, you know, while I don't get the credit that I probably deserve, I think that, you know, I'm going to pat myself on the back and I am proud of the social, the political game that I played. And um, I think that that carried me throughout the game in all honesty. And 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 I just think that it worked with this group. In future seasons, probably I'll come in and people will be like, oh, we're over this guy and I'll be targeted and have to fight for my life. But I think that it was just the, the group that was there that, that that I got really lucky. Well, you talk about being the radar. You talk about, you know, conflict. Usually I ask in these interviews, like, what's one thing that you wish we could have seen? But I, I sort of have to answer that question for you because I heard about this infamous fight that was shown on the previews, didn't make the edit because you talked at the very beginning of this interview about like, I was caught between Fessel and Bananas. And apparently I heard that there was a bit of conflict between you three over one evening and a rap. I need to hear the story from your perspective, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> yeah that's funny um dude honestly that was that was such it was just a drunken night it was me and fessy being idiots like this is the thing me and fessy are like brothers like we like when we talk on the phone he's cracking on me he's like go to the gym and go hit a thruster go bench press like that's our friendship so like we talk shit to each other we crack on each other so that night um you know it just the, I think the reason they didn't air it is because there was no, it, it didn't fit in story. It had nothing mm -hmm. to do with the game. It had nothing to do with anything. Was it intense? Yeah, I mean, we're both big guys. We're both, like, loud people. So I think, well, I'm loud. Um, So it did get heated. But I think that the reason they didn't air was just because the very next morning, I grabbed this coffee and was like, dude, I'm, we're being idiots. Like, we know how this ended up last time. Like, you went home. Mm -hmm. I was devastated. I lost my number one. So, like, we hugged it out the very next day, and it died right there. And I think that there was no, – if if we would have kept that tension and we would have been like, oh, now I'm coming after Fessy and turned the house like I did the last time – um you know i think that they would have aired that but it didn't make sense we were on the bus drunk cracking jokes it was like a rap battle that then we went into the house and i made a really bad joke and we had an argument and the next day we made up so it was a drunken dumb it was a stupid night um but yeah it i'm kind of glad they didn't show it honestly <laughs> it wasn't a good look for the both of us <laughs> so well josh it, regardless of what was shown and what wasn't shown again i can say like uh i i do think this was the best game that you had played and look i wish we were talking next week regardless i know it's really tough to like walk away with your head held high from all this considering especially how things had ended with your relationships but given the fact that they're on the mend and you had you know 13 weeks to look back on this to review the fact that you played a, a pretty damn good game all things considered so thank you as always yeah dude it's tough i'm not gonna lie it's really hard because you obviously like prepared uh you want the success you want to win you want to make it to the end and it's been really hard my journey hasn't been easy but um i feel very you know i think people are always throwing out my record and i haven't been to a final and all that stuff and i think that that's exactly why i love the show it's because i'm pressured to come back a better man a better athlete a better competitor a better person and i truly have to come home and from each season like you just have to learn and grow and 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 you know learn from your mistakes and i think for me it was kind of going against my word and turning on johnny which was i fumbled right at the end um and i lost myself a little bit so that's definitely something that i will never do again um and just like train harder keep working on myself I, I I feel like you know it's really hard to take L after L after L and have the world it seems like the fan base constantly throw it in my face but in all reality it's like that's just my fuel and I'm 29 mm -hmm. God willingly they give me a call for the next one um and I'll just come back better so you can just only learn grow and become a better challenger from it so yeah